Welcome to our Maundy Thursday service. Although the setting is the Last Supper, the theme will be service, the washing of feet. We begin with the confession. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, God promises to heal us and forgive us. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. The response for each section will be, Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For self-centered living, for failing to walk with hum humility and gentleness, holy, holy God, God Holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For longing to have what is not ours, and for hearts that are not at rest with ourselves. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For misuse of human relationships, for unwillingness to see the image of God in others. Holy, holy God, God holy, holy and mighty, mighty holy, holy and immortal, immortal have, have mercy on us. For jealousies that defied families and nations, and for rivalries that create strife and warfare. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For reluctance in sharing the gifts of God, and for carelessness with the fruits of creation. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For hurtful words that condemn, and for angry deeds that harm. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For idleness in witnessing to Jesus Christ, and for squandering the gifts of love and grace. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. Through the Holy Spirit, God cleanses us and gives us the power to proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was servant of all. Your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, 
you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I had a lot of problems with my feet as a child. I had no arches, and so from the time I was a child, I had to wear arch supports in my shoes. It was also difficult finding shoes for me in the first place because the width of my feet was super narrow. I have a triple-A heel and a quadruple-A toe. My father used to joke that my mother's feet were wide because she grew up on a farm and used to keep her bare feet warm by standing in cow patties in the meadow. And as children, my sister and I would go barefoot outside. We would play in the grass and in the dirt, or we would walk across the hot asphalt. And by the end of the day, our feet were really, really dirty. We were always being told to wash your feet, either by my mom or my grandmother. There was a basin, warm soapy water, and towels to do just that. The ritual of foot washing in the church was not something that I experienced at all growing up. It wasn't a ritual that was widely used among Lutherans. And I think sometimes we tend to have a hang-up about people seeing our feet. We shouldn't, but I know many people do. And so the first time I participated in foot washing on Monday, Thursday, was when I was on internship, and my feet were washed by a member of Synod staff, who was also a member of my internship church. It was a profound reminder of what it meant for Jesus to do this for his disciples. In the lesson for this evening, Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Rabbi, gets up close and personal with the feet of his disciples. 
and it's quite unexpected. He's Jesus. He shouldn't be stooping down to wash feet. That's beneath him. That's what slaves are for. This is Peter's complaint. He's not worthy to have his teacher, his master and friend, take the role of slave and stoop down low to wash his feet. But Jesus tells Peter, unless I do this for you, you have no part with me. By stooping down to wash the feet of his disciples, Jesus was providing them and us with a true act of humble love. Scripture tells us, after he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that's what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. He not only stoops and performs the act of a slave, Jesus requires us to do the same. In the end of this lesson, Jesus says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, also you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus requires that we show our love for him by not only saying that we love one another, but by proving that we love one another with our actions. In this time of crisis in our world, how have your actions shown your love for one another? Have you stayed home? Have you kept your distance? Have you prayed for one another? And I mean not only the people you know, but have you prayed for all people everywhere? Have you shown the love that Jesus says to have for one another? We follow Jesus on his path towards the cross and towards our salvation. His death draws near. His last command to us is to love one another. Can we just do it? Hmm? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, and sacrificing God, you have given so much to us. This world and all that is in it, our very lives, and even our abilities. You ask that as disciples of Jesus, that we love one another truly and humbly. You ask us to become slaves by stooping to help others and even washing their feet. Inspire us by your willingness to serve so that we may indeed fulfill the commandment to love one another by serving. All of these things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.
this night we have heard our Lord's commandment to love one another as he has loved us. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant. Our commitment to this loving service is signified in the washing of feet following the example our Lord gave us on the night before his death. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of love, unite your church in its commitment to humble service. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving acts of kindness. Let us love one another as you have loved us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable weather for crops to grow. Guide the hands of those who cultivate farm and garden. Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you give us a new commandment to love for one, uh, to have love for one another. We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief and humanitarian aid to populations in need especially Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Hunger, the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit, especially those we name before you, either aloud or in our hearts. Be with those who are suffering from COVID-19, and especially those who have lost loved ones to this disease. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you invite us to your table of mercy. Heal all divisions between members of the, these assemblies. Extend the hospitality of this table beyond these walls, that your love and welcome be made known to all. Hear us, O Lord. 
your mercy is great. God of love, glorify your servants who walked by faith in this life and who now feast with you. Inspire us by the sacrifice of those who are imprisoned, persecuted, or martyred for their faith, especially Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This time we turn to the stripping of the altar, a tradition representing the humiliation and stripping of Jesus in trial, getting us ready for the bareness of Good Friday and allowing for a full reset for Easter. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me? so far from the words of my groaning. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips, they shake their heads. Trust in the Lord, let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him if God so delights in him. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mom, mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a slashing and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in. A band of evildoers circles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far away. O my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild bulls you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise or abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. 